<laughs> so we are uh, on air. Uh, today is Saturday, July 5th. We have our regular Saturday broadcast. Hello, Eli. Hey, Gabriel. Sephira, Sabrina. Hello, guys. Hello. Hi, Max. Hi, Jim. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello. So we have uh, finished our elections. Um, 410 votes have been casted by approximately 40 people. We have 12 members of the organizing committee elected, and uh, these are also our galactic representatives. Now we are official members voted for us, and um, we can represent the members, and we can represent the Earth in the galaxy. That is exciting. Um, we should come together in a hangout and discuss our plans. Um, new things are happening. Uh, members, new members join us almost every day. We get more applications to human colony uh, email coming from people. Very exciting. Um, few people like Ellie and Olivia Avalizeppe and others uh, suggested that they will host webinars on specific topics. So we now need to set them up for that. So I invite people who are already authorized and who knows how to do that to help and train them to do this. That is very exciting. Now we have, like, I'm a host of a TV show. And Jim is a star on my TV show, and um, others also will host their TV shows, and that is very exciting. We will have uh, multiple uh, shows on our program on our Hukola TV, and we have more formal channel called Hukola TV, and uh, we have less formal channel called Hukola Chat, where people just hang out. And, and we have spontaneous webinars uh, every day now. So, yes, go ahead. So, uh, after 10, p 10 a.m., your time is usually start something okay. every day now. Wow. And, uh, uh, we have to figure out how to make it more public so everyone knows that they're going on. Yes. Mm. So, yes, we should work to announce those to, to others. Um, right now, the, the, there are instructions how to join, and you have to be part of the chat. Google chat and Skype mm -hmm. chat. So if you're part of that group, you, mm -hmm. you will get announcements. If you're not, find once. Uh, join our welcome team. Contact our welcome team, and they will set you up to be included in the spontaneous handouts. Wonderful, yes. Uh, every time I go on to do a um, any work on the, online, I see that it's very act a lot of activities going on. So that's really cool. Yes, a lot of laughing too. <laughs> oh yes, from what I understand, I, they a lot of people laughed about Lakesh on the beach. Oh, we we loved it. We were like, I don't know if you've seen all the comments there are on on the video on yeah. Google. <laughs> you too. Everybody, it's just in awe about that video. It's so important to have fun. <laughs> yes. Well, the cash was sort of in a very interesting, pensive kind of. I don't know what kind of mood he was in, but he yeah. was in a good mood. But it was he was taking everything in pretty interestingly. Yeah, he was in awe. Yeah, it was in all of everything, and and it it sort of made us realize how you know sometimes we do, but how beautiful our planet is, and mm -hmm. help us appreciate it more. Yes, I agree. I, I'm sorry, I saw the opposite. I expected him to say, "Hey, how beautiful your planet is," and he said, "No, your waves are different. Your sand is different." Friend and everything, <laughs> and I don't like the wine. I don't like the mosquitoes. I think he did like it actually. Because he's he's trying to adjust to a different environment, so so he's 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 sort of analyzing everything at the same time and comparing. Mm -hmm. So and it was a lot. You know, there was a lot of information there, and he was like taking notes, like trying to take notes of everything, trying uh, to absorb yeah. everything. 
That's so true. I think I think the uh, scientific side of him was um, was very much in there, sort of like let me take this in and that in, and what is this and what is that, and 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 Max explaining the mosquitoes, and then he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, uh, I, I know their civilization is 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 uh, focused on um, uh, sensation and experiencing things and learning through experience. Yes, that's true. Uh, yeah. That the way they kind of um, uh, you know, like I said in the past, he was very excited to try burger burger at McDonald's or Big Mac, whatever it was. So and then he he also wished to get to have experience of human sex and Jim refused by some reason. <laughs> by some reason. <laughs> so, uh, so, so, uh, then it's a very, a very uh, you know, no, not all extraterrestrials are like that, but uh, like Asher civilization, the blues are of that, of that kind. So, yes, we gave him, you know, I gave him food massage and he enjoyed so much food massage. Yes. So, whenever we, give, we get the chance, you know, he, you know, we can entice him by com uh, for coming by, by offering him a food massage. Then will, he will jump in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, and actually, it would be interested. I, w I was actually thinking that. I was thinking like uh, Max and Lakash and Jim on the road. <laughs> <laughs> the adventures of yeah. Yes. Yeah, so we could take him to the desert and leave him out there. See what he says. <laughs> that means we'd have to, that means we'd have to tie you up, Jim, on a on a cactus yeah, really. and leave you out there. Yeah. <laughs> mosquito here, here in Sweden, there's a lot of mosquitoes, so maybe here. Yes. yes. <laughs> but Gabriel has uh, Akesh visited him, so Gabriel, you can take care of that. And Sabrina had him ah. visit. Yeah, I had him as well. Oh, the Akesh has been making his rounds. Who was that? Sabrina had him. Ellie. Ellie. Yeah. Oh. I, I had. Did, like did a, he like come in fully, Ellie? Ellie? It was in my sleep. It was oh, in my sleep. sleep. I okay. had the channeling. And I woke up. Like, like, oh. like, come in, like, here with his arms and stop somewhere here. Like he did, like his friend did with your arms. Uh, yeah, um, I was I, 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 I was experiencing, but it was not like it was someone else. And for me, it was a nightmare. It was like one of the, my worst uh, nightmares. But then I decided, oh, maybe that's an extraordinary experience, and my perception of it, my interpretation of what it changes. I said whatever, and it, you know, nightmare went away. And I just experienced it was a strange experience, but it wasn't scary anymore. It's just how you interpret what happens to you. Yes. I have a Max, Max, I have a Oops. Max, Max. Yeah. Uh, we have two guests here from China. Maybe oh, we yeah. can speak a little slower uh, to make sure they understand yeah. everything, or just ask them if they understand everything. Hello, hello, Jin. Uh, hi, thank you. Thank you, Rose. You're hello. welcome. Hey, uh, are you both understanding? Are what we're Lynn. talking? I'm not sure. Lynn. Does she? Does she hear us? Helen, I think she, Helen, are you on mute? That's why we can't hear you. You probably answer, but we don't hear you because. Oh no! I think now she's smiling. Hello. <laughs> just wait. Yes, hi. Can you understand yeah, as well? We talk so fast, we're so used to our own language. So I just wanted to suggest yeah. just a little bit slower. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know if she's hearing. Lynn, can you, can you like, wave? Like, wave. Hello? Show, show, yes, show your hand. We yeah. can't hear you, but you can show your hand like that. Yay, Lynn, we are waving to you. <laughs> yeah, yay, yay. Awesome. Oh, there we go. Go. Yeah. Very good. Okay. We'll have one more All right. Oh, another person uh, from China. Ellie? Can you read your. Oh, uh, yeah. Mm. Aileen, we can hear you now. Yes. And one more person from China and one shub bam. Hello, everybody. Hello. Okay, I used to teach English in Germany and I, I learned in Germany to speak slowly. 
with foreigners, just so they yes. can catch everything. And yeah. stop between the wars, yes, stop between yes. the wars. Yes. Yeah. Let's breathe deeply and let's speak slowly. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> okay. We should organize. We have 12 people elected. We should have a hangout and discuss things. And the main thing I think is to accommodate new people who want to do stuff. Uh, some people join us, join hangouts, they need instructions how to use hangouts, like Kim yesterday asked for instructions. So we, we need a team which will help them. And right now we have welcome team and we have few call TV team which are properly experienced to, to do that, properly educated to do that. So we need more of this. We need video instructions. We need and to so, how to make those. And some people seem to be interested in sharing their story to everyone when they come in. Yes. And some don't want to speak from the beginning. So. We probably should create an event where new people can can come in and share their story that are announced before. Yeah, we norm we normally um, when whenever they come into a webinar and it's a new person, we normally have them share something about themselves. So yeah. and ask them. noise pollution here. Hold on. <laughs> so, uh, so the action item is welcome team to start um, self-introduction handouts and welcome handouts. Very good. Um, and a uh, few people, as I mentioned, Eli and Oli, Olivia, uh, wanted to do their own uh, things, so we need to help them set up their hangouts and their shows. So I guess that would be to the Hukola TV team. And I invite more more people join Hukola TV team to, to basically uh, do this broadcast and train people to do the broadcasts and organize and communicate. Well, well I noticed um, some of you were starting broadcasts on the hangout. Sabrina, you did that. Yes. Gabriel did that. Um, a few of you are starting to do that, so that's really cool. We appreciate that. Thank you. And next item, we got the donations. I raised it was the first campaign where we raised the money f towards a specific goal, and it was um, Jim's air conditioner. We received money for that. Yes. Thank you, Mike. Awesome. Five dollars raised in a couple days, and uh, I tomorrow I will go buy it. Today is. Nice day, not too hot, so I didn't do that yet, but okay. I will. Hold on. <laughs> you have to turn this off. All right. And today, uh, the idea we have for invitations, I invite uh, people, hybrids, the topic is hybrids. Uh, uh, hybrids from everywhere, human-alien hybrids, to speak to us. Uh, hybrids from the colonies, hybrids from... Well, wherever, wherever they live, uh, uh, they usually live on uh, ships. Sometimes they live on planets. Sometimes they m mingle together with the uh, local population. Maybe some hybrids from Earth would speak to us. We are hybrids, but we are uh, we grew up in uh, Earth culture. We invite hybrids from alien or hybrid cultures. They mostly are results of hybridization program, and multiple programs has been have been run. Some by most of that was done by Gurkfitnir, which is a Yaleran. They have hybridization program for the last many years, fifty or so. Uh, Zetas ran hybridization program, and Pleiadians and Lirans didn't do much, but the reptilians did. So. All of those hybrids are our descendants, and uh, we welcome them to speak. That opens a Pandora box, but you know that's you know it's already open. We need just to get in touch with them, and we learn a lot. And I have now three hybrid children up there, and and four down here. And um, I, I I love my ch all my all my children, and many of us have hybrid children up there. So so we want to speak to them. I invite my Adult hybrid children. We have two adults and one young child. 
I invite my two adult children to speak to us. Nina is invited, Peter is invited, and any other hybrids who want to speak to us. And maybe some of the, your children of those present here, may they might come through. Whatever is good. <coughs> That's about it. Invitation is open. Okay. So, and a hybrid came through during your radio yes. session. Yes, and you know, I didn't, I didn't pronounce that incense. I didn't pronounce that. It was in my mind, check mark. I decided to do that, and he came in response to my mental invitation. I didn't even send it out. It was right in my mind, closed and forgotten. Actually, I got decided last week after last webinar. After last webinar, I decided and decided and. Didn't speak to anyone. Didn't even think about it. It was this should make check mark, and he came in response to. You. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Jim. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. His name was Ensign. Yes. Ensign. 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 It's like Vincent without B. Oh, Ensign. Okay. And Max, we heard that Nina is very beautiful like extremely beautiful, your daughter, and very intelligent, very talented. That must make you happy. Oh, sure. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm, uh, you know, she asked me two questions which changed a lot. I mean, she's very high vibration, one of the highest there. Mm. She asks very wise question. The first question she asked, you can, you can bring someone. Okay. Uh, the first question she asked was, how do we bring more people to human colonies? And it was the end of September. Until from between the May last year and September, the colonies all re were already created, but the website didn't exist. It was only me, Jim, and aliens speaking. And she mm. said, how do we bring more people to the colonies? And I said, I don't know. I will ask. I sent people to send questions to my friends, and then the next thing I was... Making the website. It was like next day I started the website, and um, eight days after programming it, it was online, and the response was unexpectedly high. Like many applications came in the first two days. Wow. And the question was actually the previous question was why are you so sad? When you know your your daughter comes to you and she looks at you and says, why are you so sad? And that question I guess can be asked to any human. You are living here on Earth, enjoying you know this nature, this trees, this food, and why are you so so sad? They're hybrids. They feel isolated. They feel away from their parents, and their life is in a way like much more different and difficult in a way. But they wonder why we are so sad here. So that was a very revealing question to me to understand our existence here. Mm. Thank you. I, I'm getting a lot of energy right now. <laughs> oh, you can channel two. We can have two channels at the same time. You can channel two. We can have two channels at the same time if you like.
Uh, I am Sib. Hello, Sib. Hello. Hello, Sib. Just returned from Earth. Yes. Several Hello, Sib. days ago. Yes. I was in a country that is not very populated. Uh huh. And it was interesting, my experiences. For I was just studying the earth and the, and the kinds of soils and plant life and animal life that were there. Yes. I am a hybrid. Yes. Um, can you more introduce your history? How did you come up about? How did I come up about? Uh, it's a wrong expression. Uh, tell me about your history. What makes you proud? What are your parents and that sort, of, that sort of thing? Pride in parents? Yes. I don't think about them much anymore, but my parents have been gone for a while. Uh -huh. I had parents on Earth and I had parents elsewhere as well. But I was told as a child that I was a hybrid when I was about six. Uh -huh. And they brought me up in a world of being a hybrid. Yes. And it was a desolate place. It had much heat and desert. And it was similar to what my parents, the hybrid parents, experienced. I don't know why I'm here, really. Oh. We invited hybrids to share with us their stories and understanding of hybrid culture. And why are the questions family oriented? Oh, it is important for us to understand the hybrids. And for us, the family is everything, so that's why we ask. The family was everything that I could experience at that time. But that because that's all that there was. I was not close to towns or villages. There were a few people around, but they were all aware of who I was and where I came from and why I was there. And they had met my, one of my alien parents. Uh-huh. So, and, it was not surprising to them that we were there. It seems like the people in the desert are aware of the aliens more than those in towns and cities, which sort in sort makes sense mm -hmm. because they are visited more and because they are disconnected. Food sources were limited, but the experience was quite fulfilling. Uh -huh. My parents, Earthwise parents, yes. were very understanding and taught me the wisdom of their traditions. Mm -hmm. And I taught them what came to me through the alien communications and downloads. Yes. So therefore, I was able to teach this tribe some things that they did not know. Wow. So. Thank you. Uh, do you have any questions to us? Yes. Everybody, please participate in the discussion if you wish to answer. Questions for you are, why is it so difficult to for your people in the cities to get along. Oh, I wrote the whole book about that. Do you have answers, people, uh, participants? Well, um, first of all, hello. My name is Safira. Nice Sid. to meet you. I am Sid. Hello, Sid. Uh, I have a question before answering your question. Uh, or maybe I should answer your question and then ask mine. Okay. Yeah, that sounds well, better. <laughs> that sounds better. Okay, yeah. well, one reason is because the more people there are, 
the, the harder it is to feel close to each other. There's a sort of an alienation which happens in bigger cities. And when you don't have a personal connection, it's hard to feel if somebody's in pain or sick or lonely. If the alienation just becomes stronger and I would say that was one of the main reasons. But even in oh. close families, there is much dissension in the cities. When I am with my people and my family in the desert, there is absolutely none of this kind of dissension. Even if someone is quiet and does not share their thoughts, they are thought of as equals. In your cities, Families can fall apart and disintegrate easily, and I do not understand that. Maybe. Um, Go ahead, when Gabriel. People, when people live in apartments in the, the world, they don't know the neighbors of the apartment. They are more afraid of talking with them. They have their own family group they are connected to, and other people in the city they don't connect. They are scared of them in some ways. What, are they scared of each other as a family unit? It is too much information, too much energy is happening, and it is too much going around for our minds to comprehend. So therefore, it becomes a problem of too much information, too much you are and not getting the information in each other correctly, Yes. Um, yes, Sabrina? Yeah. I'll, I'll give you my... Hello, this is Sabrina. I'll give you my perspective on this. I, th I think sometimes when um, people live in cities, what, what ends up happening is that there's so much going on in, in, in the city, in, in that particular city, and, and everybody, everyone gets involved in a lot of things. So it doesn't allow room for sharing with others. And as it is in our society nowadays, we have uh, so many things going on that we get involved, um, computers, phones, all of that, which has also caused uh, people to retreat even further into themselves. So even when they have free time, uh, the free time it's spent in, in one of those apparatus. Uh, being focused on that as opposed to um, just going uh, across the hallway and speak to a neighbor and, and that sort of thing, getting together with family. Stimulus is too high. Yes. And also I think what is going on outside the particular family unit like Sabrina and Ellie and others mentioned is the stress and the fear and the criminality and the loneliness, all those things which are out there, you know, become part of what's going on inside as well, unconsciously. It's yeah. like the, con the collective yeah. consciousness is, is, is going into the emotions of the people living in a small family unit, that's one thing, and yeah, and also the stress and the isolation. It's, it's fairly odd because you think if so many people are living in close quarters, they would befriend each other and support each other and sadly it's often opposite except within certain cultures like I lived in Germany and there were a lot of Turkish communities around uh, from Turkey and they were in close contact with each other despite the same kind of situation where there's stress and big city so maybe it's just the Western culture which tends to be so isolated no matter where we are except in the country where you were apparently That's Yes. Yeah. Yep. Because what the culture was self-contained where I was, and your culture is too vast in the city. I understand, but what I do not understand is the family union falling apart. You would think that a family union would find a way to stay together in these times, even if there are difficulties. I find that when we were in the desolation area and had only 15 to 20 people around at all times, that there was only survival, but in a very positive way. It was not of stress 
it was out of love for each other that they survived. They moved together as a unit, and yet the families do not move together as a unit in the, in the cities. And I would think that there would be some kind of unity and move, universal movement within a single family unit. But there, there are those that are, but in the city it would seem less. Uh, Sefira, I will let you ask your question later. I just wanted to keep stay on this topic because it was, I think it is oh, a very that's fine. Yes. That's fine. Yeah, so, that's fine. So I have a, Sefira traveled a lot, and I traveled a lot, at least within Russia I traveled a lot, and looked for the answer to what you say. I grew up in Moscow, which is like a huge city, like one of few, few hugest cities. Yes. And I traveled to other places, and when I go to place Siberia where life is difficult and people yes. are sparse, they're so much more friendly. I was on a Lake Baikal, it's one of the biggest lakes. Uh, we were traveling on a boat, and most of the people were local. And there was one person who was loud and nasty to everyone and arrogant, and he came out to be from Moscow, and it was so obvious. People from Moscow were selfish, loud, and taking all attention to themselves, while local people were glued together. And that is the only way you can survive in this wilderness by welcoming the guest, by being nice to each other. Yes, we welcomed our guests from other places. There were some, and still are, some nomadic people in the world, and I was in a region where they were, and they were hospitable one to another. So, the observation is true. Cities don't accept extraterrestrials, and uh, uh, people in the cities are not, many of them are not as nice to each other as people in hardship, natural hardship areas. So, what's the reason? We are not telepathic, first. We are very programmable. The child from childhood is brought up in a specific culture, and the cultures are very different. Even within the city, you have thousands of clusters of cultures. And some families are very strong, some families are very weak, almost non-existent. But in the cities, there is a factor of brainwashing. And the brainwashing is very strong. Brainwashing, education, television, uh, mass media, uh, yes. these propaganda. Things are, these things I am aware of and they do bring a negative effect, it would appear. Yeah. I was not telepathic on Earth, and I am not fully telepathic at this time. So that is the reason for my questioning of the city life, because I'm not telepathic, even now. But the Earth people that seem to have some tele telepathic ability seem to gather together and move away from those that do not have it. Oh, I didn't notice that. You mean our community? At times, yes. Ah. We still have some fear that we, we, if we connect telepathically they will know private information. That is plausible, yes. I'm sorry, but I have not any time left. Oh. But this is an interesting conversation that I would like to continue at some time. But there is something calling me away at this point. Oh, thank you for your visit. I appreciate it. Please come again. Thank you, Seb. <sighs> Take heed of your thoughts. This is to care.
Namaste. Namaste. Welcome. Okay. Namaste. I see you are bringing in those that you were that are hybrids. Yes. And what is the purpose of this? Um. One of those is to learn more about hybrid culture. We haven't done it before, and now I think is the time. I see. They are reluctant to let many hybrids come and speak yet, except for those that are established within the systems. Some of them are established, but have thoughts that are not concurrent with the alliances and things of this nature. This is why we do not push the hybrids into your world. Oh, yes, it is understandable. In the past, Nina and Peter were allowed to speak on cameras. So, they are. So I would uh, appreciate them coming, but any other hybrids who are authorized to speak to humans would be also welcome. Sib was a, an example of someone who was able to speak for his culture but he could not speak anymore there was something he was about ready to reveal that was not able to be revealed we understand hello to care how are you Safira hello I'm nice fine. to see you I'm fine I will bring Nina to you thank you Oh, did awesome. Question. Yes, if you, if you like to ask a question, that would be great. Time. Did you have a question? Oh, yes, to care. Um, I was getting the Lirin DNA. I was wondering how far along it is. Is it finished? Is it still on it its is, way? In fact, they had stopped it at one point, one moment. It is not. It is not completed yet, but there is a lot of stress going on in your life. When this comes to a lower amount, then it will continue. You are at 2.7%. No, 3.7%. I'm sorry. Okay. I, I thought the Lirin DNA would help me through my stress <laughs> and not stop it. Well, it to, for it to be put in properly, there would be, should be less stress when the body is being integrated with DNA of another source. Oh, okay, thank you. And you know, Tukur, I had one hybrid child. Her name is Shoshana, and she passed, as you know, if you remember her. I do. And, um,. Do, do I have any other hybrid children? Maybe I do. You will. I, I will. Okay. Um, I, I put an application for myself and another gentleman to have a hybrid child together. Do you know yeah. how the status of that is going? It is. They're considering it now. Okay. It is so to speak. Okay. Thank you very much. Take care. Takar, is the orb activated inside of me? It's Gabriel. Not yet. It was deactivated by the negative spirit and damaged. Therefore, it was worked on several times, but they are afraid to reactivate it quite yet. There is something else that must be done. Okay. I will bring Nina to you. Thank you. Uh, 
Hello. Hey Nina, how are you? I am fine. How are you? Hello, okay. Hello Nina. Hello. Uh, there are many of you there, yes. I can feel your spirits. Hi Nina, nice to meet you. Ah, nice to meet you as well. What are the questions that you would like to ask? I don't you know, know if you were ready to, to come. Maybe you were taken without, uh, invited without preparation. But the idea is we want to learn more about hybrids. And if you have questions to us about the Earth, you're welcome to ask as well. I am more prepared to speak about the tel tel telepathy. Yes. What we are learning from the Earthlings from telepathy. Would that be an interest to you? Yes. Yes. We find very strong opinions in most humans about certain things that they were brought up with. And once we have touched this part of telepathy in a human being, it becomes a source of question within them. They, they question all their very strong opinions when they feel our telepathy and feel how we feel about these certain particular things, it causes them to question all the things in their past human existence, which is very interesting to us at this time. Whenever have any of you, because some of you have been to the colonies, realized that since you've been to the colonies, you question some of the things that you do or some of the things that you believe that were very, very strong within you. Can I have comments on that? Because that's an interest to me. Hello, Nina. It's Elena. Sabrina, if... Okay. Um, I, I remember some of my visits and it, it has been different different role playing in different stages and it was very very interesting to see that you can be very different in some aspects and maybe this changes the way I'm sorry, maybe this changes the way you see world when you come back. Yes. I see that there are changes when when certain people have returned to the colony they are slightly changed in their attitude toward the colony in a much better way at first they were they were protecting themselves and the next time they come they were questioning themselves does anybody remember that they were I don't they remember were anything about what that. they believe, and then they question what they believe. And it is an interesting thing for me because I am finding that they are becoming more alien in their thought processes as they the more times they visit the colony. Not less human, but more apt to understand an alien thought process. Yeah. Um, this is Sabrina. <clears throat> yeah. I can speak a little bit about this. Yeah. Um, yeah, I find myself actually um, having e even here more um, in setting an intention um, yeah. before speaking. I, I seem to be adopting a lot of that, the Arcturian part in me and I understand about questioning because what happens is that when you learn something new you go back and try and fit it with what your beliefs were and if it doesn't then a big shift it's, it stirs up things within you and you wonder whether um, how would that fit in with the new information you have now and you either have to 
displace whatever you had brought in um, in order to adapt the new information. My question to you then is that does your new alien thought pattern fit with humanity at all? Yes. I think it, it does. Does the people around you understand that your thought patterns are changing or do they just see you as the same? Uh, my son is right here so he could probably answer that for you. Um, I, I haven't noticed a yeah. large amount of change. Uh, it's Eugene, uh, her son. Uh, I haven't noticed a large amount of change, but she has been more intention-based. And I just want to, um, what do you mean more alien thought process? A more alien thought process for humans would be, as she was saying, for intention to be brought to the thought process in a very un... What is the word? It just happens. It's not something that you really have to think about. It becomes a habit that you intention yourselves toward the good and forward movement of the species and the family and the persona in which you are in, existing in. This means that your vibration would be an intent, but subconsciously it is always being brought up by your very own changes in your persona. Yeah, yeah, because it's not just the uh, behavior, but the languages are becoming, I speak them for every day now, it seems more and more. Has anyone noticed that they are becoming less angry? Yes. Yes. I I become coming that. I I, uh, I was I I always always had alien thought patterns inside of me, and I thought that was normal. But uh, yes, that the other people have it too, but they don't really have that. The things you will notice is you will become less angry, less sad, less worried, less stressful. Have you noticed this happening? Yes. I, I notice that, you know, I have the same sort of some days there is an impulse to become angry, stressed, but the way I perceive the same impulse is different. I can process my anger in something less angry and more creative uh, result. So, in essence, we are creating hybrids, emotional hybrids, intellectual hybrids with humanity. So this is part of what I wanted to discuss with you today. It is not just DNA that causes your hybridization but your thought processes and your emotional processes, spiritual processes will also be part of your hybridization without necessarily having any DNA added to your system, but merely bringing you to the colonies and having you become telepathic with different species will cause hybridization <coughs> within your thought patterns. Does this make sense to you? Yes, because I, I don't have any, um, I haven't been given any DNA. But yet, um, yeah. we are learning that the human kind can become more hybrid just by being with those of another species and locking telepathically with them because it brings out the spirit, the intellect, and the emotion of the alien that is w already within you from past generations or from present generations. And that yeah. DNA becomes much more activated within the individual. And so and we're talking about hybrid people. You yeah. yourselves are becoming 
much more hybrid every day that you visit the colonies. Yes, Anina, hi, this is Safira. Yeah. Uh, hi. <laughs> uh, maybe you knew my spirit, my hybrid daughter, uh, Shoshana. Yes. Okay. What, uh, what I well, I wanted to say what I've noticed um, through there were many of us have been to the colonies and don't remember. And I've come to I used to be frustrating um, that I don't remember. I wanted to remember, but then I've come to realize it might be better not to remember because the experiences would be so um, so beautiful and so diverse that being back here would be harder. So, uh, but I also agree that the, pat the thought patterns, we can change without realizing that we've been there. You know, we don't have to remember to change, is what you're saying. Yeah. Just having any kind of give and take. Also, our scientists have come up with some experiments which said that the voice, the sound we use, the words we use, yeah. the sounds we are exposed to, can also change our DNA. So yeah. I guess, I suppose, being in the colonies, even if we don't have any hybridization, and just being around your sights, your sounds, your mentality, will also change our DNA. The, we have discovered that the uni unity of chakras between alien and human changes the energy slightly within a human being as well. Mm. And it promotes actually better health and better energy flow. Mm -hmm. So, have any of you noticed an increase in health? I am okay. I haven't been sick for a good period, so I can say we're. I'm very good. It's Elena. Yes, you should eventually. Those of you that are visiting the colony start to experience a greater health in your human life because your vibration is slightly changed your energy fields are slightly more energetic and your thought patterns are becoming slightly more healthy when you think more positively when you think more in an upper and vibrational range it is possible for it to affect your health if it is in alignment with intent and purpose of life. Thank you. Have I been recently to the colonies? Recently? Like last week or Safira, the last time you were there was two weeks ago. Not oh. many of you have been there this last week. There is a reason for that, but um, you will start coming again shortly. Thank you very much. Hello? 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 Yes, hello there. Who is that? Uh, I'm Shubham. Oh, Shubham is here. Yes, I'm Shubham. from India. From India. Yeah. I'm from India. From, for the past 10 years, I have been seeing dreams of spaceships like... and. One month ago, I was having a dream in that I was fighting a great type alien. I need to know why this dream suffer. Why do you dream about these things? Yes, spaceships and all. Massive spaceships. Yes, there's many spaceships around India. They do not seem to bother your people as much as other societies but they're they're very much interested in your cultures and ways they go back to the very beginning of some other cultures that are very um, uh, visible in the galaxy but what about your dream I did not understand what you were asking about the dream I am 20 now so for the past 10 years I am having spaceship dreams UFOs yes. like massive UFOs hovering above my house yes yes it and is sometimes okay. I see aliens great types 
Yes, you're being prepared for the first contact. You will be a, one okay. of the people that will be contacted ahead of time so that you can prepare others. Yes, and, I'm uh, Do you see any beings during this period of time in your dreams? Yes, I don't remember much, but uh, gray type, gray alien type. Yes. I've seen two or three. Yes. Let them speak to you. They will tell you what you what these dreams are about. They will talk to you when you are ready to hear them. You are seeing the ships, but yes, yes. you need to hear what the voices say when they speak in the next dreams. Do you understand? Okay. Yes. Yes, I will communicate. Thank you. You are of a great help for your people. Thank you. You are welcome. Sabrina, please announce the next questioner. Now, seven and seven. Yeah, 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 thank you. Hello, Nina. Hello. Uh, hello, this is Kirby. I'm a Chinese. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Um, well, last week I know I have a Yayo daughter. Yes. And uh, I, I want to ask her, her what's her name? Ah, I will ask and see what her name. Do you know her age? No, I I, I know nothing about her. I just I just called I I know I have a Yayo daughter. One moment. Thank you. Her name is Sinjana. Mm, can you spell it? Spell it? S I N G E N A. Sinjana. Sinjana. Okay, okay, thank you. Well, as a Chinese, I, I, I want to know um, that all Earth people have taken a part in the hybrid program. Not, um, all, no. not, uh, not all people on the Earth are, but those that want it will get it. There was a period that they were giving those of um, interest hybridization, but now it is by volunteer only. It is by volunteer only now. At one time it was not voluntary, but they discovered that that is not proper protocol, not even for in the galaxy or for humanity. So now they will do only by request. Volunteer. Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think mm. there was another dimension in this question. Chinese were they hybridized? Also? Yes, some Chinese were hybridized. Yes, that is yeah, a yeah, good okay. question. Yes, there are people from every every nation with hybridization within them. Uh, is it everything? Uh, Sabrina, I guess you might invite the next questioner. Mm -hmm. Gabriel? Gabriel? Hello. Hello. Uh, could you tell me, uh, do, I have, do I have a specific purpose in the open contact when it starts happening? You will know sh very shortly, but yes, there is purpose for you, but you do not know what it is yet, and you will not know for a little while. 
but I will know long before the open contact. Or... Yes, there is much you need to learn right now. The orb needs to be reactivated. Also, your language is to be increased, and there will be another one coming as well. Your telepathy is work being worked on, so there is some time for you. Was that was I on the colony last week? Yes. Okay. How many are going to the colonies, Gukvinia colonies now? There, within human colony population, 42 have been to the colonies. Okay. That's yeah, great news. Yeah, but how many have gone that's not part of our community? All the humans have gone from Earth. 187. Okay, and it's increasing all the time, or? We are trying to make it so that there can be up to 200 in one colony at a time, because this is the kind of population we need to train all at once for first contact. There will be many that will need to calm and have information to help others with this time because there will be much fear at the beginning but it should not last. Um, as human learning how to connect to the ETs now will help other humans yes. in the future. Many, so we, yes. What I understand is that we're going to help others to connect to the ETs yes. because we, we will know how to do that. Yes. That way will become apparent. Gabriel, are you done with questions? Do you have more? And Caroline has a question she asked about can uh, ask about her newest hybrids. Uh, are they born yet? One moment. Liney. Yes. Liney. Hicker saying Liney. Yes. Your hybrid child turned out to be twins. And yes, they are born. Congratulations to them and to Laini and to their surrogate parents. Twins, one of each, a boy and a girl, which is interesting. They must have... Interesting. I will not comment further. Who is next asking? Sarah. Sarah. Before Sarah, Liney, you must name your boy and your girl with a name that you will choose. They will go by this for the rest of their existence. Yeah. Sarah, now. Okay. Caroline is, it takes some time before she gets this on live because it's. Hello. She said, thank you. Oh gosh. <laughs> well, we will listen to Sarah's question. I have limited time. Hello, Nina. Hello. Hi. I. I was told that I had a hybrid child, and I would like to know, well, number one, the name, and what sex is it. I don't know any information just yet, but... You will be I able to name the child if you like. Oh, I will be able to name the child. And it is a boy. It's a boy? Yes. Oh. And you may name it 
and they will go by this name for the rest of their existence. Oh, wow. Do you know what um, species it is? I do not. Takur knows this. One moment. Mm -hmm. this is, it is a Lyran. It's a Lyran. Ah. Unusual. Why is unusual? Because it was actually taken from the lineage of Tukur's family. Oh, wow. The Thank you. DNA was donated by someone in Tukur's lineage, yes. I thought Tukur was Lirin. Yes. So it's unusual how? That someone in her lineage would volunteer to do this. Oh, I see what you're saying. Thank you. And thank to her and whoever it came from. Thank you very much. And um, I also wanted to know if I had any alien DNA. You will have some. You Did you ask for DNA to be given? I, I never did. But I wanted to know whether or not I did already. There is a little, just a moment, let me check with Tikra. Okay. Yes, there is a little Liren in you already. That is why they chose Liren. Oh, wow. Thank you. Four percent. Yes, you have 4% Liren. Um, I've noticed there's a lot of reptilian uh, entities that are within me. So do I have any reptilian DNA as well? One moment. You said you feel them within you? Yes, like they're another aspect of me. Ah, one moment. Tukur should be here. She could answer all these questions. <laughs> you do have some reptilian DNA, about 2%. And the thing about reptilian DNA is that it's much stronger, it has a much stronger effect on humanity, on human beings than some of the other DNAs because it is very different in many senses. So if you can, if you understand that you have this within you, this is why you are feeling the reptilian part. It is much stronger in effect to the human body and mind. Oh, okay. And yes, you do have reptilians around you, by the way. I do? Oh, yes. Okay. Any Lyrans around me? <laughs> Not at the moment, but there will be. But there will be. Yes. Yes, um, I... I'm not sure whether or not I've spoken Lyran just yet. I would get with Tikur on that as well. Okay, very good. Um, when was the last time I was at the colonies? Seven days ago. Seven days ago when I woke up. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Ellie, you're next. Nina, it's Elena. I. Elena, I've seen you many times. I know. I want to give you my great love and gratitude, and just to thank you for doing the work with us. And I just give you a big hug, as we do. We hug each other. <laughs> and 
my father's people. Yes, and just to tell you that we love you so much, and we love Ticker as well. Just have, have this love and gratitude, and know that we will always love you. Thank you, and we will always love you as well. Um, I wanted uh, just to speak about the experience in the colonies for the others to hear, um, in order to in order to let them know that, uh, for example, what I remember from my dream last night was I was saving some uh, children that were without parents and someone was hunting us and we were looking for good people to give us house so we can have some food there and we can hide from some other guys. It was a very interesting dream. But I, I think that this was uh, in the colonies, uh, just as a um, play around to see um, what our position will be at such moments. A holographic display area. Yes. Yes, that, that exists. And yes, you perhaps perceived it correctly, but continue to think about the meanings of the different things that you see in these holographic projections. Yes. Saving of children and things. There are many, many subtle meanings and different things to be for you to bring into your thoughts. Okay. Okay, Nina, thank you. You are welcome. Um Okay, uh, it's Sabrina. Yes, Sabrina. Um, first, there's a question about first contact that everybody's wondering because uh, Bashar had said that on 26, the fall of 2016, everything will change. So, do you have any information about that? Bashar, and first is first, perhaps not. Speaking of first contact, but he's speaking of an incident that will change the way the Earth perceives a certain thing. First contact, however, has been pushed back a little because you are not ready yet. The Earth is not ready yet. But um, there has not been a date put on it, but it is not with not far, far away, no. Okay. But what Bashar speaks of, as we see it, as he perceives the timeline and the experience of it, is not first contact. Oh, okay. Yeah, because we weren't sure exactly what, what was meant by that, because um, it wasn't clear. Yeah, that's what, what was my understanding as well. When I heard, uh, read the description, I didn't perceive it as a first contact. It was something else, which which just puzzles me. What could it be? But it, right. I, yeah, there are usual suspects. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um. And then my question is, um, I had been told that uh, that probably about a hybrid child. Um, I don't know how that process is going, and I have also put in a request for that. Yes, your request has been approved, but it has not happened as of yet. Okay. There Thank is you. something in the, um, that they want to speak to you about before they process that DNA. Okay. Thank you. It will be a, they will be with you. But I am aware that they are wanting to speak to you first. Okay. All right, thank you. Uh, I, I, Nina, do you have any questions to us in general or any advice to us as a community? Yes. Mm -hmm. Remain calm and let the effects of what our work is doing come upon you because it is helping you raise your vibrations. 
it is helping you raise your spiritual levels as well. I have learned so much from the humans, and I have seen decreases in their anger, their doubt, their many of their negative qualities are reducing within them. Stress has been reduced. And as all these things reduce, health has been improved, pain has been reduced, and it will continue to happen this way. Not to say that some of you will not be sick. That is not what I'm saying. I'm just saying it appears that that is one of the outcomes of the higher vibrations within them. I think he didn't speak to you. I think it was just a random broadcast, random yes. intrusion. Yes. Oh, I must go now. Oh, just tell me how Masha is doing. Masha is fine. Is she crawling or walking? Is she what? Crawl or walks? Yes, she is walking. Wow. My sister. <laughs> this is very sweet. Do you, do you speak to her often? When I can, yes. What does she say? She doesn't speak much yet. She's walking and she is speaking in some things. But she is slower to speak than some, but faster to walk. I'm sending her an image of a yellow butterfly with brown contour. Ah, very lovely. She will appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, Nina, before you go, may I please ask you one more question? Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's about my hybrid daughter, Shoshana. Does she still come to visit, even she is in spirit? How does do you still see her? I see Shoshana in many ways. Yes. Can you ex can you explain a little more? Not at this time. <laughs> but I do see. Uh, you do see her. Okay. Uh, she came to visit me before she passed. Uh, and it seemed like she was going to transport me to visit um, Era. I'm not sure where she was taking me. And I woke up. I'm wondering if I was actually went with her somewhere. And I yeah. just don't remember. Yes, you did. Oh, I did. Okay. <laughs> That's nice. <laughs> okay. I miss her. Actually, um, where you saw her was another place. You were already you were already there when you saw her. Oh, you were okay. Already at the other place. Okay, thank you very much. I, and yes, yes. Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you. I must go now. Yes, please come again more often, and let's discuss the hybrid life, maybe your childhood and things of that sort. Ah. Mm, yes. It was good seeing you. Nice to have you. I must go now. Bye, There's Nina. more you in the colonies. Bye, Nina. Thank you. Goodbye. We will speak soon. Bye, bye. Bye, bye. <laughs> Namaste. Bye, bye. We love you. <laughs> we love you. Max, is Nina Yayel? Um, good question. Uh, she certainly has oh. Yayel. She certainly has human. Hello, Jim. Hi, I'm here. Oh, Hi, Jim. Welcome back. Thank you. Welcome back to Welcome life. Back. Mm -hmm. That was a long time. Wow. Yes, that was beautiful. Wow. It's interesting what DNA the 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 hybrids have because uh, I think we 
we do not get to choose it when we ask for a hybrid child in most of the cases. Mm. You choose what? The hybrid, um, the hybrid child with what? Um, with the what? Yeah. I think you can ask. We just uh, want to, you know. It, I would, in instructions, we didn't specify what to ask about, but I think we we can ask easily, and they would listen. Oh, they, we can ask if, of if course. we want a particular one. Always, we can, you know, always. Re you can always request it. Always know. request, and then you know, you can discuss, and you know, it can become more, more sophisticated. Like uh, there was <laughs> a general idea. I mean, I came, I, I came with this idea to um, to volunteer, <laughs> and they accepted it. But now. Um, you know, we the invitation was just to uh, invite uh, the um, you know the basically volunteer to submit your DNA for hybridization. But then I thought, how about I ask not just in general Liron DNA, but I ask Takur's DNA. I think it was just a creative way of asking, and they kind of approved it. So again, you can ask, uh, and you know, I guess Sephira was first to. Specifically, ask you know it can be multiple people combining their DNA. That's also possible. You know, it's it's possible even for human scientists, and obviously it's possible for alien scientists to mix together things. But you know, if it's more than two people are parents, and typically for hybrid children, it's more than two people are parents. So, in effect, you become not a parent, but more like a grandparent because only grandparent has only a quarter of their DNA in a child. So. Many of our hybrid children have less than 50% uh, of our DNA, maybe less than that. Depends how many parents are there. So it's a, it's a little like a uh, it's a mix, but it's, it's a artificial mix. And uh, but I, I think it's still very good and symbolically it's very important. Uh, for me, it was very important to invite. Okay, Nina is oh, it's sophisticated. Um, okay. Nina got some of my DNA, and I got some of Nina's DNA. I don't know how often that happens, but I'm a sort of Nina's child as well. <laughs> oh my God! Talk about the chicken or the egg. <laughs> he is both. He's the chicken egg. Yes, <laughs> Max. That's great. I remember it, Max, are Syrians involved in this at all? The what? Syrians. Oh, I don't know. Like Syrian DNA. I don't think I'm so. Not aware of that. We no comment. Have. I don't know. I was. I know some people that said uh, they were told they had Syrian DNA. Uh, Syrians I said. Uh, I mean, the only thing I know about Syrians. Remember that video where we described the effects of different races. Syrians said, when they inject infuse their DNA into humans in the past, in the distant past, they found that humans become so spiritual they lost interest in life. They oh. became lethargic or indifferent. That's the mm -hmm. only thing I, that uh, I remember about it. But, you know, in my in my case, I didn't hear about Syrians at all. But I think every human has ancient Syrian infusion. Basically, we are descendants of Syrians. It's one of the founder races of Homo sapiens. Oh, that's why I'm so tired. No. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> we are all yeah, tired. Yeah, because I know there is, there is somebody, somebody that has Syrian DNA. Um, I think Mary does. Uh, right. You cannot really disclose without their oh. permission. Well, she, they said it when she was here. Okay, that's okay. Okay, I know that my daughter Jessica has Syrian, and I don't have Syrian, neither does her dad, but she does. And uh, Chakir told her she doesn't need an upgrade at the moment. Uh, and she has also a lot of contact with the angelic world. And I think, Jim, you told me that the Syrians are very angelic like. so. Yeah, she, my daughter, might have brought that very, DNA very, in, in with her. Yeah, in very with the angel. Very lover. spiritual, yes. Yeah, and so so is my daughter. <laughs> yeah. Good, good for her. <laughs> yeah. But, but it seems like when we ask questions to the ETs, Thank you. we can open up stuff. If we ask, like, when we asked the uh, one human from the colony, to come and speak to us, they just came and do do that. But but they are not really allowed to interfere. So we need to come up, open up the ability for them to do things like that way. 
they will not ask us about that. I see. For That's can what I understand. Can you give an example? Uh, it was too general to understand. It, basically, uh, the humans at the colony that we have started speaking to, be before we d we did not get so much things back from the colonies, but when as soon as we asked them one human to come in through Jim, then we started getting information from there. Yeah, but they are not allowed to ask us to come in. We need to ask the question before. Yeah, in other words, we have to open the door in order for them to. And yeah. knock on the door before, in order for them to open the door. Correct. Um, that's true. Yes, that's very true. It can because also be a matter of timing, Gabriel, that we are now allowed to know more because as the human colony is now developing also. We, we've developed a consciousness we didn't have six months ago. So I think yes. we're also allowed to get more information now. Yes. We're, yes, we're developing into a different consciousness in a way. As a human mm -hmm. colony, we are developing into something different. It's really quite interesting, I think. Mm -hmm. We're evolving quicker than the rest of the world in some way. For me, I can say it's fast. Yes. We're <laughs> faster than the rest of the world right now. Yes. So that's a really cool thing. So, and I wouldn't have said that two months ago. <laughs> but but when, I could we say get, when we get money free, like that we are here <laughs> for our highest excitement. Right. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. Jim and Max, uh, there was a question from uh, a person I, I spoke with about the open contact because this will be interesting to a lot of people that are watching. Um, he asked me how can we make how can we make sure that when the open contact happens, uh, it will be not um, it will be not like. Um, theater or like a hallucin hallucinogenic experience for the viewers because there will be a group of people watching this at 12 points in the world, hopefully. Yeah. And how can we uh, be sure that the thing we are watching is not a scam, it's not a, a something uh, prepared just to uh, fool us or to make us think something in order to be in order to be controlled. There will be specific uh, preparations that will be not like anything that they've experienced before and there will be specific things said in the preparations that will come out as out in a different way in the uh, first contact that will prove that they knew about the first contact before it happened as an individual. Does that make sense? Premonition. A premonition that will come true, correct. Yes. Uh, that and, is good. And that way they will know that what they're seeing is real because they will have actually seen it in their head or something. Something like that, I'm not sure. They will know what to expect. Yes. Okay. Exactly. Um, there is no way, we discussed that many times, and I discussed it in the book in many ways, there is no way to prove anything at once. I mean, anything can be manipulated, there could be false flag, first contact which is fully uh, simulated, or there could, you know, bad aliens can come and pretend they are beautiful or things of that sort. Uh, it's, it's a process, it's not a single event, and a single event, you know, humans can, you know, there is so much deception here and there is some deception there, so it's possible to deceive anyone, especially with their technology. You can pretend to be anything, like uh, they can take any shape, reptilians can take shapes, even human military, they can project any images in our brain, so the single event, you can't really rely on it. It's more like a process of interaction. It's a continuous process of interaction. Obviously, the event of massive first contact is is essential, but what happens after that 
few hours is even more important than what happens in this first few hours. Correct. Yes. Because how it's how it's accepted and perceived is the most important part of the first contract. And I will just announce again what is written in my posts about that and in the book. The United the, Yes. No, it's another one. Book number three. Welcome. Oh, welcome. Welcome to the Earth. Um the guide for aliens. Um so yeah. United Nations is our official representative. It's it's so laughable, so disabled, so poorly organized, and so infiltrated with negative that it's a joke. But it's still the only global organization at the moment, or the main global organization. Human Colony is another representative of the Earth because we are not yet fully infiltrated, and we are. It's a joke. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, we are. Uh, we are light workers. So we are grassroots light workers also. Like workers on other sides are Earth representatives. So there is a lot of global representatives. Steve Beckham and his team is great. Uh, Stephen Greer, they're both Steve, right? Stephen Greer and Steve Beckham yes. uh, are um, uh, have crowds of light workers who are true representatives of of global consciousness. So we want to be invited up there. We want the human colony to host. Representatives from every nation. Hello. We want, we <laughs> recommend that they invite us from this community. We want, we recommend that they invite Steve Beckham's community, Stephen Greer's community, uh, light workers from several communities to visit the human colony and establish their represented representations. I call it global village, basically. Something which is protected from negatives and where the humans can travel back and forth and speak and develop the first contact, uh, develop the further contact with extraterrestrials. Mm -hmm. On Earth, where can we set up the permanent embassies? Obviously, those have to be protected, and aliens have some of the technologies pro to protect themselves. So, um, United Nations is, would, would be a great place where galactic people could uh, have their em embassies and uh, communicate with the Earth. Uh, university campuses would be another great places like Stanford, Berkeley, um, Harvard, uh, you know, major campuses, um, European major university campuses, Asian major university, because scientists are and artists are kind of concentrated there and they can represent best what we can offer for the content. Politicians also, but you know, obviously the political capital, but I I argue that scientists and artistic people are even better representatives than politicians for the for the globe. So what ha what happens after these first few hours is important. Very good. And the videos. Uh, Slava was invited today to come to the Colony 3 and work on the videos there. Basically, they, as I proposed in the beginning, more than half a year ago, is that there will be a lot of questions. After the first contact, there will be a lot of questions. The public will, will be hungry eager to learn more about the aliens. Finally, as they realize it could be possible, they need to know their agenda. Are they good? What? Why would they be here? What's the main interest here? And uh, how, how compatible they are with us? Can you hug them? Can they, you hybridize with them? Why they run the hybridization program for so long? I mean, all these questions come out. And if there is no answers, people will come with their own suspicions and worst nightmare suspicions that we are under control of aliens. To prevent that, obviously it would be nice to provide positive information. Now, if the aliens just broadcast what they want to say, it will be less efficient than if it would be humans who know about them will talk about them. So I recommend recommended in the past, and I continue to recommend, 
that the humans who are in contact in the colonies interview the aliens and tell in the videos uh, what they know about the aliens. And that would be believed to, by humans much more. So humans believe much more to humans who know aliens than to aliens themselves. So if this dude comes and he looks quite gray, quite gray, he looks like a gray, um, people wouldn't even listen, they will be scared just to look at his face. But if there is mm, any of us near this do, and it is a conversation between one of us and this do, and the reaction, peaceful reaction of the human would teach more the mainstream public than what this do says. If uh, there is a child sitting on this do's lip, is it lip? Lap, lap. On this do lap, this do's lap. Then they will realize they it's it's okay to touch them, and you yell are safe to touch. You we won't get hurt. There is no electric charge or chemical poison or bacterial poison. They are quite inert. They can they designed to be compatible with humans. So and if child likes them, then it's it teaches the humanity much more than whatever they say. So see Nina speaking to other humans, seeing this do, seeing it occur, I assume she would be a little bit scary to look at, but seeing it occur mingling with children and adults would be the main message. And that is being done. They already developed videos. Now, the calculation is how many videos are needed. I assume the first two weeks after the first contact, the first open contact, would be most critical. And we have about, you know, different countries, we have different television channels, and I believe some of the channels would welcome these videos. Officially, they would compete to broadcast these videos. So through the human colony, we can offer those videos, mm -hmm. or directly, or directly from the colony up there to the television stations. They, you know, they can send those, whether memory cards or just electronically, they can send those videos or publish them on YouTube and allow the. Uh, broadcasting, how do you call it, channels mm -hmm. uh, to to broadcast them. So, how many hours? I think we videos? should. I think we should make them pay for our video. I think we. Yes, yes, sure. We should make them pay for, yes. for our material. How many, <laughs> I agree. Uh, how many videos, video hours can can be absorbed by the humanity and, and not overwhelm the humanity in first two weeks? I assume it's say five, ten hours per day for two weeks, it's uh, ten by ten, hundred hours, and then there is possibly several channels, so it's about thousand hours per of interviews in the first two weeks gradually released to the humanity, and possibly it wouldn't be all at once, but give them the first day, give the mainstream humanity the first day, first five hours or ten hours, and then and then kind of gradually expand the range of topics. First it is, we came in peace. I mean, that's up to them what to say first, but we came in peace and interviews, and that's how we look. And we have been here for thousands of years. All, all of that, what we already know, that has to be delivered to the mainstream public and not to make them scared or overwhelmed. And also giving them balanced opinions. So the aliens say we are nice, but now humans who communicate with them have to verify, you know, how nice are they? How nice are Yael? How nice are reptilians? How nice are Zeta Grays? How nice are Orions? We never spoke to Orions. How nice are... There are a few other, a few other negatives and lots more positives. But they will be just dealing with the UEL at first, so they'll want to know how nice the UEL is, and if they get to trust them, then then they'll know that what they say they can depend on. So I don't know how much of that will be Yale and how much of that would be hybrids and how it's. I guess it's still in the works, but Yale are sort of the ones which leave. But I recommend to them to come as as United Galactic uh, representative. So. There would be at least some of the Lyrans, some of the Pleiadians. That would, for humanity, would be much easier to accept than to have only one species. 
you yeah. could be the leaders, but if you know that it is balanced galactic thing, it's much more important. Because one species, we, we say, you know, use what you say, the mainstream say, whatever suspiciously say, whatever you say is good, but are you representing the whole galaxy or is just one species that comes first? So we want to hear all opinions, balanced. So bringing um, other represent our other races, even reptilians, would make it much more believable to what, what they say. If there is a reptilian representative and Lyran representative, an Arcturian and Pleiadian, and even Zeta, all together kind of saying whatever they say is not untrue, that will make us make the mainstream much believe it much more. Uh, Max? Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to start a blog for Nina uh, on Human Colony. I'm going to, uh, uh, Jim, Nina asked a very good question and so did Sib about, Nina asked, uh, are we noticing any changes in the way we do things, in our emotions, the way we think, because many of us go to the colonies and don't remember and some of us do, and so that was her interest. So some of us here answered her. I think I'll start a question on Human Colony that she can read for those who were in here. They can also add their um, experiences to that. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we, we have the topics by category, so create a new category. How do you want to name it? Um, for Nina. <laughs> I don't know. How, yes? how would people know who she is? How, what's the best way to name Nina's, that? You... Nina's blog. <laughs> Nina's blog. Yeah. Nina's Maybe. blog means that she writes it, but you know she she does not, not yeah. permit the blog yet. No, oh. I I was thinking more to the fact that um whatever questions that she has for us, kind of like the question that she just put out for everyone to answer, um the questions could be posted there, and then the people can go there and make their answers for Perfect. her. Perfect. Yes. Yeah. One questions per per one. Question per post. So one yes. post. Nina Nina asked that question, and you post it, and people in comments would answer. Right? Yes. Right. Yeah. Yes. That's what I'll, I'll do. So. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure I want to use the word blog because it sounds like a whole lot of. Yeah. It could be somebody. any name, but something towards yeah. that effect, um, where Nina she can curious. post her questions. Nina has questions. Yeah. Nina has curious. But how so, we will know what her questions are? <laughs> well, we have to give them no. and somebody will post them. I'm just going to start with one question, which she asked today. And if she comes through to Max or Jim and she has another one, if she knows she can get answers from us, then Jim and Max could tell us and we could repost right. those so questions. Obviously, she wanted to learn the reaction right. of people right. that have been to the colony. Even if they don't remember, they mm -hmm. can start. They, she feels that they are starting to change in their everyday lives. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's that's an interesting thought. Um, yes. And a very that's a very powerful thought, actually. Yes. It's awesome. Yeah. So, Hi, Dan. Uh, welcome. Uh, so, welcome, uh, Dan. Oh, Hello. Dan. So yes, the category, I guess, just call the category Nina. New category would be Nina. And under that category, there will be a post with a question and inviting other people to comment in right, comments exactly. on their experiences. Yes. Right. Okay. I'll so, do that. I'll, po I'll post that for her. She'll read it. I'm sure she'll read it. Right? You can communicate with her, Max, telepathically. Tell her to read her, her mail. <laughs> I will do yeah, I will do Okay. Okay. Awesome. How is this dude doing? Have you had any news from him lately? Um, Dee's do is incredibly busy. I know that from Pentim. Pentim is his right hand diplomatic advisor or whatever, and he comes to some sessions. Uh, but he is, they don't really allow him to uh, take much time to come to Earth through. Earthlings anymore, but he does every now and then. But he's, um, they just settled down a lot of the seismic problems that were happening in um, Yellowstone National Park in mm. California and Japan. Those were the three big ones. Um, and so 
the weather is also of a great because now that there's the El Nino, and it's probably the worst, El, the warmest El Nino they've had, which will change the weather a great deal as well. Plus the, all the energy coming from the center of the galaxy that's been working with us, and just a lot of things. So he's too busy to really interact with us, but he's doing a great job. So. It's it. It seems like if they fix a problem on one place, then suddenly there's unbalance on another place because right. it became balanced in this place. Of course, though, Bashar knows already that this timeline will continue to exist, but with the help of the alien, other aliens. So that's an interesting fact. So mm -hmm. they're helping okay. us continue to exist. Are you okay? I'm good. Yeah, I'm good. Yes, I'm are you okay? You look like you have a headache. To, to think, I uh, while Jim is talking on one topic, I need to figure out mm -hmm. where, where do we turn the uh, steering wheel. Oh. The next topic, and I'm trying to focus, and I think I, I have, have an idea. Oh, wait, wait, before okay. you do that, before you do that, I have to go. Um, are we having an organizational meeting Monday or Tuesday? Do you know? <sighs> Not decided yet. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, I didn't decide yet. That's it fine. Might be clear. Okay. We do need to have organizational meetings. I just can't decide at the moment. Well, that's fine. That's fine. I, uh, yeah, it's all good. Just checking. All right. I we'll will see you guys later. Biden, basically, we need to uh, speak. Uh, certainly, Gordon and uh, Tyler are uh, invited there, and all all the in, all, basically all all elected people. Yes, but we didn't decide on time. Oh, where? Uh, the organization meeting. We have twelve elected pe people. Uh, Gordon and Gordon is right now. Uh, um, how do you call it? Um, uh, leader of their broadcasting committee, Hukula TV, and Tyler is the leader of editing team. And we need to see their progress and um, make uh, adjustments to accommodate the needs of the community. I see. Okay, that's fine. Yes. Jim, thank you. It was amazing today, amazing information. Uh, oh. Also, Sib, Sib asked about why are families in the inner cities, why do they fall apart? Why is there less unity? Yes. It was a very philosophical and excellent question. Will you post it? And um, Yes. I think he was looking for, an, uh, he seemed to be looking for a way to fix that. Yes. Is that an alien? Huh? Was that an alien or a human question? It was a hybrid human alien, yes. A human alien question. Yeah. Yeah, he was on our profile, so yeah. I think he experienced some things of the city. He probably traveled to them. I'm not sure how he where he got that question. But <laughs> another way of he has experience with a uh, rural culture and uh, he says that uh, their tribal people have no problem with aliens. Why the mainstream public on Earth is has so much problem with that? Yeah, that's it's interesting. I didn't know that they didn't have any problem with them. Did you? He said that. Well, I mean, I didn't know. Oh, that you were that. speaking at the time, so yeah, you so weren't. I, uh, I didn't know that. Didn't, there was yeah. a movie. There was a movie which I believe Dan or Rowie posted called "The Beautiful Green," and it's a it's subtitled, I believe, and it uh, they show the uh, from another planet. They show some uh, hybrids or ETs deciding to visit Earth again after 200 years, and the one of them actually two of them accidentally land in a Aborigine tribe in Africa, like an original, uh, yeah. very isolated tribe, and they no problem accepting them from another planet and just integrating oh, them into their culture. It was amazing. That. Is that still? Yeah. Is it on our site? Um, I think Rowie posted it, or he posted it on Google Plus or on our site. But oh, it's okay. called the, it's called the Beautiful Green, and you can find it on YouTube. And it's an amazing movie. Um, it's also a little bit comical. It's not meant to be overly serious, but um, yeah, it deals with a lot of telepathy. It deals with telepathy big time, and. Uh, yeah, another culture on another planet, which seems to be us, you know, having evolved to another planet 200 years later. 
and yeah. it's so interesting. They're like, do do they still have money? They can still have money. They were discussing among themselves, you know. Yeah, no, <laughs> from 200 years ago, they're hoping that things are not the same, yeah. and so they decide to send somebody here to check it out. So it's, it's a very nice movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna watch that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah me too. Have to watch yeah. that. Sounds good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, it's really good. Okay, guys, I wish you a nice afternoon. I'll see you guys later. Bye bye. I'll talk right, to you. Bye bye. Bye. Much love. Much love. Thank you. All. Bye, me as well. Thank you very much to all of you too, and I'll talk to you later. Bye. Many blessings. Bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye. Um, Dan, are you there? I am. Hello. How are you? I'm wonderful, thank you. How about yourselves? Hello. Oh, having fun here. Um, yes. Remember, you started about a month ago. You started a nice tradition to update us on what's happening, especially. What is happening on the Hangouts, which we are not part of? Can you give us an update? What's new? Um, well, Frantishek has started channeling. Yes, congratulations he's to Frantishek. Being called yes. Isa. Say again? He's bringing through a being called Isa. Yes. Um, I've only watched the recordings of it, but um, I believe Sarah's had more hands on contact with Isa, and so has Gabriel. Apparently she's a very lovely entity, very very amazing energy. Yes, cool. um, he channeled Isa, and yesterday you guys need to see the video. Yesterday he channeled Metatron, the angel. It was absolutely wonderful. Cool. Absolutely wonderful. It is a must see. I'll have to see that, yeah. Yes. And That's he posted cool. it on Rukula, I, I believe. Open Hearts. Okay. Or um, Wide Hearts, something to that effect. Wow. He made a whole new column. It is absolutely beautiful. The information we were able to get. Great. Lovely. And he's such a beautiful energy. You love him. This... Um, we're getting so many new channelers, it's wonderful. It's just a beautiful thing. Um, yeah. it, it'll help the world out so much that more people are channeling. It's just going to... Also, Mary has started channeling. Yes, Mary is channeling as yeah. well. Mary. We're Mary like, a, like we're a birthing of channelers channel. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, we are speak, training with a language. Yes. yes. And many and people have been activated recently. Yes. Many, yes. many new languages. Many new languages. Wow, fantastic. Yes, I have to go back. I know there were some new languages that I heard of. So. And, and it seems to help by peop if people come to the Hangout and try yes. to speak them, they just come. They should we have speak come. training with other people, so we invite people to come to the Hangouts and train with us. Yes, if I can, I do come. Sometimes I can't get in, but I do. I have gotten invited, but I, I'm not usually online a lot, except during sessions, and I have to move out to other things, like mowing lawns and doing that. <laughs> but, um, so I don't have a whole lot, a lot of time for that, but I love doing it when I can. Yes. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jim, you're invited to my webinar Thursday. Oh, good. It would, be, it would be. It should be at three o'clock your time. Okay. Ten p.m. my time. Okay. <laughs> uh, who is setting up the uh, the uh, technical part? Is it you doing that? I will do that. Um, previous time I was not sure what to do, but the, this Thursday. After Thursday, it's Friday. So uh, this Thursday, I will I will learn to do everything. Uh, are you broadcasting it? Uh, you mean uh, we would be uh, live? Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. So yes. you do it through uh, as a manager of uh, you. You're doing it yourself. There is no one else setting up it for you. Uh, well, if the, if someone wants to do it, I will, it will be fine. But I probably would uh, learn how to do it just to have the know-how. 
Yes, I think you're technically capable. Yes. Let me know if you need help. I will. Uh, I plan to um, create a video instruction. I already did several video instructions, and I will plan to create an updated video instruction for broadcasters how to broadcast. Okay. So it will be like on. Uh, I will post it on the site, and you can just follow the steps. Uh, I wish the broadcasting committee were more active and help new broadcasters. I invite everybody who is technically capable to coordinate and create a committee and uh, basically teach people how to broadcast. This will be nice. Yes. How was the previous one? You didn't broadcast it, right? Yes, uh, it was very funny because um, I got confused, and it was one hour later. I understand. And uh, I just found a link that was uh, shared from before, and it was uh, still an uh, active one. So I shared this to the others, and everyone joined. Wow. I got lucky. <laughs> I see. How did it go? It was very nice. It was very nice. Uh, we tried to do some meditation. And um, it seemed that it's a bit advanced for most of the people, so I will just um, find a less advanced one, so it can be easily digested. And uh, after that, we can discuss the more advanced, um, the more the Merkaba I'm doing. Oh, oh Merkaba! Very good. Mm. Very good. That's a good one. Yes, yeah, very good. But we will find an uh, easier one for um, starters, and uh, after that, if someone wants, we can do the other one because it's not long; it's only eight minutes. It's okay. Not good. Long. Mm. Excellent. That's beautiful. Yes. Uh, you mean in the whole thing is eight minutes, or just it includes eight minute meditation? How does it work? The meditation, the whole the whole meditation, Markaba, is ten is eight to ten minutes. But then you hang out for another hour, or is we it? We will hang out uh, a lot, maybe for two hours. But I we will have a long discussion before the meditation. I understand now. We Very will cool. explain it. Uh, we will start with a simple one, and we will do maybe the most more complicated one after that. But we will have a long discussion for for the whole process and the whole fifth dimension dimensional. Um, Substance of things. So, for the our listeners, we need to announce it. Um, so, next Thursday, 3 mm -hmm. p.m. Eastern uh, yes. American Eastern Time. Yeah, Eastern Standard Time. Um, Ellie is going to do a webinar on crystals and dimensions and meditation. Is it about right? Yes, and it's the 11th of July. 11. Tell me the topic again. What's the topic? Crystalline meditation. If people have crystals, they should have them. Um, and it would be a topic of um, working with the crystals and what are the crystals in general. Do they have consciousness as well? Can they can they feel? Can they receive? Can they give? And uh, we will discuss uh, about the whole um, atmosphere we should have at home in order to feel good, in order to feel uh, charged. How should our home be um, decorated, so to say? Yes, decoration, beauty. Yes, and uh, and, and substance. What what are important things to have at home? And we will speak about the meditations, and I know that time will happen very fast while we are speaking, because uh, when we discuss, we have discussion back and forth, and time is slipping through our fingers so fast. Right. Yeah. How do you say in English? Crystalline or crystalline? You can say it either way. Either way, okay. Crystalline or crystalline, yes. Uh-huh. Nice. Uh, yes. Thank you for coming forward with that. That's beautiful. That is. It's gorgeous. I will have. I will try to have everything written down so people can also read because sometimes with the language uh, pronunciation you don't understand everything. Excellent. Uh, yes. 
so on the website, uh, it will be posted under webinars category, right? On the top right corner, there is box yes, webinars. Yes, yes, yes. I got okay. that. I know how to do it. I I will do that as well. Nice. Uh, so Frantisek started channeling. That's great. He has the ability to broadcast. Uh, he's he knows that better than I do. I learned from him. Yes, so, and I just posted. It. I just. Yes? Posted the link for yesterday's uh, channeling. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, yes. wonderful! Where'd you post to that? In the chat box here. Okay. Chat good. box. Mm. It's also been posted on the Google Plus as well. Um, I if it's not on the Human Colony site, I can always just um, put the link on there as well. Yes. Very good. Thank you. Yes. After something has been recorded, please post it on the Human Colony site in the right. way we post it usually. So. People who go there will see the video and watch it after the event. Uh, and assign it to category webinars. Also, it's uh, webinars and videos are the same category. So, so then it's a post, and uh, and it uh, it's under the category. It will be on the top corner, and people would would watch it later. Mm -hmm. So now Mary doesn't seem to be as advanced in Frantisek in technology. So we need someone to help Mary to broadcast her so channeling events and somebody to host them. Basically, there is a channeler, but also there is an audience. And it's nice to have a show host who would be asking the questions. So that we invite people to coordinate with Mary and give her help and the broadcasting committee to give her help to to uh, unravel her channeling talents. Wow, cool. I don't have, uh, we don't have any more specific uh, instructions what to do. Basically there is a need for someone to organize the broadcast and there is a need for someone to uh, to ask questions. So it could be one person or two for people. We have typical, Brian is great for that. If Brian, if you can coordinate with Mary, that would be terrific because you're technically cha not challenging that way, qualified and yeah. uh, and you're a great host for that. And Caitlin, you also authorized to to do the, you have that manager capacity. So you, if you, if you want to organize their event, that would be Caitlin Mary or Brian Mary. So that would be great. Now Gabriel, is uh, is knows how to set up the broadcast. So if you need technical yeah. help, just set up broadcast. Gabriel can do Te that. Technical help with anything. I'm yes. I'm channeling technology almost. Excellent. So Wonderful. Gabriel, get in contact with Brian, Caitlin, and Mary, and just let her uh, unravel her channeling talent. And you know, whenever possible, do the recording because. You know, it's nice when it goes to few people in the audience, but it's much better when it's on record, so lots more hundreds of people can watch. Yeah. For and example, the la the language gym. Some people do not join in because they are afraid of being live. So. Oh, you. It's nice to announce in advance if it's going to be live or not. So if uh, for language gym, you know, this is closed language gym. You announce that and. Say we will never record or broadcast you, and for others say we will broadcast you. And because, again, it's it's some unique event in human history. It's nice to have it uh, shared with others. So Mary is very strong. Mary is uh, she has angelic guidance. She, I think, the angels would be happy that she would uh, put it on record and broadcast. I have a um a suggestion about the language gyms. Yes. If we if we set up an organized one so like once a week we have a set date for a live one and then we can have off-air ones throughout where they can just pop up spontaneously yes I think that will probably be they pop up uh, Dan can you can you take care of that I can I can do my best on it yeah I yeah. have the manager I have the manager stuff anyway so I can I can just you don't, pop you don't have to do it yourself. You just take and take care of that by uh, organizing it, and yeah. somebody else can take charge of this gym. Yeah, that's how you can take charge of that gym. It doesn't yeah. have to be. Yeah, that's fine. I, enjoy, I enjoy speaking the languages anyway. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, Sabrina we, is always uh, 
uh, a great participant and uh, she knows how to organize things so so just take care of that that would be great initially it was uh, Jaguar who started but he's busy with other things so so if you can kind of coordinate with them and take care of setting a specific time and maybe adjusting it to needs of others yeah that's fine what else is happening then um, I've had this idea for starting up a, a webinar based around kind of like a guided meditation, like storytelling, expansion into the imagination side of things so that people can come in, just kind of write a story and we can expand on it. We can just dive deep into these these ideas and just see where, where it ends up because I, f I feel that the imagination is one of the, the strongest parts that we're needing to work on yes. because where it kind of helps with channeling, it kind of helps with just general everyday things. Looking outside and you'll be looking to a cloud, you can see many different things in the clouds. But sometimes people just need a little bit of a a bit of a hand to get their imagination kick started. Yes, thank you. So you now have two things on your plate. Um, language <laughs> gym and imagination webinar. I've also been um, contacted by a few different entities as well, so I've started wow. to started to channel slightly as well. I just need to let myself let myself go a little bit with it. Wonderful. So, I think it's wonderful that more a lot of people are starting to channel and get languages and everything. I think that's the the miracle of what human colony is doing right now. So it's just a miracle that so many people are 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 uh, getting in touch with the aliens. It, it's just it just helps us. It helps the whole world. So that's great. Well, this is a proof that we are not a fake. <laughs> yes. 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 That's a proof. Yes. <laughs> Anybody joins us, guaranteed to start speaking language. But <laughs> I would advise that before anyone or during the start of a channeling for the channeling stages, um, I would advise that people should just look around, look uh, in their lives, look um, uh, about the surroundings they have in their lives and just imagine uh, how would their li life look in um, a bit of time in order to not to lose themselves because um, it's a big um, responsibility channeling and uh, we should not um, we should not uh, be um, taking everything at once uh, because it's a lot of energy and it's a lot of uh, it could be stressful so people should just take a breath and know that um, it should happen step by step not to hurry that that would be my advice it will happen yes that's very wise uh, very wise um, one step at a time uh, it takes you have to drop a lot of Luggage and weight before you fly. Yeah, yeah. I'm, st I'm still a little bit scared of the idea of channeling, but it's it's yeah. happening. So I'm kind of I'm overcoming it as it's it's getting a little bit easier, and it's it's been fun so far. I've been enjoying yeah, let me it. Tell you that the initial fear of it goes away when you realize how good they are to your mind and body when they leave and come and go. Um, and the information that they leave behind is invaluable to your life and changes you little by little. So it's really great. Absolutely. And do these, um, I think it was uh, one of the entities that, that came through you last week was saying about the Anunnaki energy that was released. Yes. I've, I've found that that energy has been absolutely amazing. I've loved it. I, I have big love for the Anunnaki. Interesting. Uh, no. Yeah, because it affected me very negatively. But I don't dislike them or or anything. But I, it just didn't affect me very well. But I'm good now. So, so it affected everybody a little differently, though. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. It shouldn't be bad in in some way. It was just a strong energy flow. Yeah, it just knocked me for a loop, I think. <laughs> it, it got us uh, unbalanced for some time, but yeah. it seems like we all become unbalanced, and then we become balanced again very quickly. 
Yeah, we learn to shift the weight so we can yeah. kind of even it out. So. Yes, it is, uh, you know, it's your responsibility to remain successful even after you shift to higher dimensions. Uh, uh, why, why would you become brave and start channeling? Because if you don't, it hurts even more. If you have the talent and you don't use it, it kind of burns. Yeah. So when you know you, you're already kind of, is given a gift, that gift kind of drives you forward. But as you do several steps forward in, in higher dimension, then you realize you lost connection to the ground. And then merging these two talents, one is to speak to the aliens, and second, to be successful on the ground is, you know, the lifetime art. Mm -hmm. And that's what we are trying to do reasonably well right now. We kind of fly, and at the same time, we walk, and we com combine that. We fly, and then land pretty well and then fly and land and sometimes it's a crash landing but sometimes you know you 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 get a lot of help on the way you get a help here and from above like recently um, I hurt my knee and um, they fixed it after my request so my knees thank thanks again it's it's uh, it's back to normal and uh, mm -hmm. things like that miracles like that happen daily to us so uh, with your gift of channel and you also get a lot of support from yeah. our alien friends so so using it wisely is good because you know we stand for it and say you know we represent the earth you get so much support in that you you we are elected we represent the light workers community uh, we stand for it and say we volunteer for the hybridization program for the colonies we invite our alien friends to land and communicate to us with that, we get a lot of support, and uh, we are hybrids in a way that we represent the Earth to the aliens as well as we represent the aliens to the Earth. So, yeah. so with that, we get support from the bottom and from the top, and it's up to us to make it peacefully co collaborating, uh, peacefully integrating together. We are Harmon in the sky and the ground harm in harmonious way together. Very good, and and you know what, uh, we have to welcome each other. All the channelers, all this. Like, some people get a little jealous of others because they don't, they can't get it as fast. But we just welcome everybody and love the, everybody the same. So it's cool. So because somebody said to me, "Don't you get upset that there's so many channelers now and they're taking away your business and stuff?" And I'm going, "No, that's not why I'm here. I mean, I'm here to help the world." Get enlightened and grow. I'm not here to be jealous of that. Of course. It was a moment. It was a moment when um, one gym had just exploded to like a channeler every day. Something yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I had a couple slow weeks where I had to do more lawns. But that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Jim still invites. Uh, now he's back from travel. And um, uh -huh. Jim is available for private sessions. Um, go to the website, there are contacts for Jim, there is a page on the left, Jim, and you can find all the concepts. And I want to thank those people that contributed toward the air conditioner, because we got enough money to, I think, about enough money to get the air conditioner. Yes, tomorrow I'll, I'll get one. So thank you very much. That was very, very thoughtful. We should probably say that when someone wants to learn something about himself, this is a big step forward for the development of this in individual. Uh -huh. And uh, when you have a private session gym or with someone that can channel, you find out uh, a lot of your of your spiritual and star line. Um, yeah, uh, where you come from, and this is good good step, first yeah. step in order to to develop yourself in a positive and. Uh, yes, develop. I mean it's been very wonderful. I, I mean, I've learned so much in the aliens tell people such great information that they're so thrilled after the session that they're like going I can't believe I got so much good information and I go well that's what they're there for they got they're giving you good information so when they told me I was reborn 40 times on earth I what? couldn't believe it 40 because it's a very long history of experiences 
Right. And when uh, the Kurd said to me that um, she thanks me for my historical view on how things went, because it's very rich, I didn't realize it at the moment, but after that I thought about it, and it was uh, all experiences collected in my con in my collective uh, mind up there, in yeah. my higher soul. So it's uh, Ellie, oh I had 41 lifetime. Oh, okay. you're better. You're better yeah. than. Me. <laughs> but, 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 you're yeah. You didn't tell but you how many no, alien no. lifetimes you had, though. I mean, but, you have a lot more than just forty. So yeah, that's but but but, but uh, basically, uh, to be under hundred, that's very little. Usually, more than one hundred lifetimes. So I'm very young, not being here. I just come here for a certain thing, really. Oh, Ellie's probably had several uh, alien lifetimes as well. So, so yes, I just us wanted, wanted to tell that this is interesting for everyone to find out for themselves. Yeah. And when they connect to you privately, they just are open to ask all these questions without anyone judging them for he wanting to know this. Yes, very true. Uh, I feel that Dan didn't finish his uh, proposal. Uh, Dan, do you have any other ideas? If I was to go into the amount of ideas I've got, we'd be here all day. <laughs> uh, go ahead. Um, well, I feel that for now, just doing the, the languages and the getting the story, kind of the story meditation thing set up, is uh, going to be enough while I'm currently working on integrating my own stuff at the minute because um, I've been blasted with some some serious stuff lately that's uh, it shot me a little bit little bit into um, many dimensions instead of just moving yeah. to the fourth and I've been through different universes I've been to other planets lately it's been it's been a wild ride there's been it's very fun Yes, and you can. That'll continue to happen. So, I don't speak about all the things that happened to me because some of it's private, um, with it, yeah. between me and the aliens, and that's okay. And but I've had a lot of experiences recently that were different, so that's cool. I've been um, I've been contacted by a couple of the the old gods as well. Um, one of them was Artemis from the Greek pantheon. She uh -huh. was a she was a funny one. Um, Artemis, you said. Artemis. Yes. And um, I've also been contacted by one of the Mesopotamian gods, one of the the original seven of the Anunnaki. Ah. But I'm not sure who it is yet. I'm still still working it out. Um, getting getting to know these beings and just. Oh. Just developing a, a friendship with him. Oh, uh, and I guess I can tell you one of the people, uh, one of my past lives, um, I discovered was Anubis. Awesome. Uh, from the Egyptian culture, he was a god of embalming and sending off to the next world. So. Um, I discovered that when talking to a, a, a certain person, so it was like interesting that uh, that came to light because he was not exactly a, a light-hearted person, uh, <laughs> but but uh, Anubis, if you look him up, he was a, he took care of the bodies of the Egyptian um, gods, sort of. Or the Egyptian leaders, and took them to their next life, and weighed their hearts to see if they were full of good or full of bad. So, wonderful. <laughs> okay, nice. Um, uh, how do you deal with this? Um, with this, so many things happening. Uh, basically, you have a lot of choices. You have a choice. And uh, you pick and choose what you where you want to go, and they respect that. And basically, it's again your higher highest excitement is even more important on uh, on that level. 
who do, who, which of the entities come to you. Like for me, uh, highest excitement lately and for a while has been a hybridization program. That's kind of fits well in what I'm, I am. You know, it's my, you know, it just makes me excited. Making children, bringing up children, thinking about genetics, uh, thinking about the whole design of the whole mm -hmm. multidimensional thing, uh, universe is is exciting. So choosing your, you know, what's uh, best for you and what's what's what where you can make a biggest bank for the bond, biggest contribution, I think is important. Mm -hmm. Right now, I think the first contact is the closest, one of the closest things at hand. Mm -hmm. So I would, uh, you know, when we invite entities, you know, we can invite gods, we can invite angels, we can invite spirits of different dimensions. And initially, I wanted to go as high as possible in dimensions, and now I realize, how about as close as, as possible? Let's invite <laughs> humans and hybrids. You know that is where we can make the biggest yeah. contribution in the moment. Although you know, I respect and we thank all the high energies which guide us. Oh, definitely, definitely. There's so many um, spirits that help and guide us day to day. So a lot of thanks is necessary. So I'm always saying thank you when I get up in the morning. Always. So. Now I'm about saying the, I'm hungry. Yes. <laughs> so how do we? Can we, I always we wanted Jim? I always wanted to do a meditation, a guided exit meditation together. Oh, Ellie should do that. Oh, Ellie, yes, Ellie, can you do that? Ellie, 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 Ellie. Are you there, Ellie? She's possibly step out for with a with a baby. Uh, yes, toddler, we didn't have an opening meditation or prayer. Oh well. Oh well. We'll have to have a closing one though. So. Dan, are you are you into med guided meditations? Nobody's there. Everybody's leaving. Are you guys there? Yes, we... I'm here. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> but I I don't particularly know how to start off the meditations. I'm still working on meditations myself. Okay. All right, let, let, let me start, and then I will Jim finish. How about that? I don't know. I'll finish your meditation? I will start <laughs> finishing meditation, and we will do your whole usual thing. Okay. Okay. I will kind of give you... I'm, I'm very random, so I will give you a few random images to dance from them. Let me see. The butterfly came today. And the butterfly is a symbol of rebirth. Mm. The caterpillar, a snake, becomes a butterfly and flies. And the butterfly lays the eggs and it becomes the caterpillar again. Right. So butterfly is how something beautiful comes from something not so beautiful. Every day when I face challenges, I practice to step above the challenges and solve them from higher perspective. And I wish you to exercise this talent, this approach, every day, very often, step above your challenges and then address them from higher perspective. You meet a trouble and think about that. Is it a real trouble? Or is it an opportunity? Is it a lesson? Or is it just neutral? Anything that happens to you is initially neutral. Your perspective makes it not, not neutral. And it is good. You choose from which perspective to look at it. And you choose which emotion to use to relate to the world. 
here is abstract challenge you pick how you take it you pick how to take your life your vibration you pick which of your vibrations you use to treat that challenge and how it can make you raise higher I wish you to raise higher whatever happens to you whatever walls barriers are on your way make them steps which bring you higher now Jim is yours hello this is John hey John I was always talking about the metaphysical in my songs welcome I always talked about it and that's why nothing really mattered to me is because I saw the circular motion of everything the circle I talked about it many times watching the wheels go round and round because the world is round turns me on it it's circular everything moves in a circular motion in eternity as well it seems like a never-ending circle keeps moving and I, I can hardly wait to see where it goes what the next part of the circle brings and so that's my prayer for you remember you're circular in the form that things repeat themselves life goes on Eternity moves forward, and like the Sasani can see all things in the circle at once, yet they'll never see it all because the circle is so vast. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Yes, thank you, John. All right. Thank you. Do you think like writing some new songs up there? What? Ah, uh, it was John Lennon visiting. Didn't sound like John Lennon. Ah, <laughs> uh, it was him. <laughs> Boys, it wasn't really did so much. But yes, the, what he said sounded like him. But. <laughs> oh, it was him. Cool. I'm Jim, sorry. Jim you, did you play the piano, the music? I, I don't I, it was... he, he's pressing it on me very strongly, yes. I think you should just put your hands on the keyboard and let it flow. Yep, he's pushing that really on me a lot lately. It's, I think it, since that last channeling with John he it's been like do do bump hit my head so yeah. so yes that will happen <laughs> so it has to happen yes i like to just see it yeah yep, yep it's going to happen you don't have to channel in the beginning just to you know no i won't come it's back already the there it's already in there come I back just have to bring it out yeah, yeah. it's already he in. needs to get close to the piano first and then just go yeah. Downstairs, I have to go down there. We'll bring it up there, up here. Yeah, we'll bring it up and put it in the living room. Okay, next webinar, have it here. Oh, okay. Okay, that's a cool idea. <laughs> and now, with all blessings, we are saying goodbye to everybody. We go have a lunch. Bye bye. Have a great day and much love to you all, really. Love I love you too. Okay. And John, I please know. come every time. We love you, John. It's amazing that you oh. join us. It would be nice if you came like every time. We would. Wow. That would be amazing. Wow. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Much All right. love to you, and I will talk to you later. Have a good day. Much bye love bye and everyone. Have have a good bye, day. everyone. Bye bye. Oh.